Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and it is in fact time for Patch Notes for Patch 613. And joining me on this patch occasion is, of course, Sir Bonus Content. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm hungry. I'm tired. And I'm moving. But other than that, I'm good. Besides that, you're good? Well, that's yeah. good. Um, I am also hungry. Just stick. Just kind of standard, you know. Like people just get hungry. It just happens, you know. Twice a day, three times a day, depending on. Yeah. How fat you are. <laughs> it's just no arguments. Um, anyways, we're gonna talk about the patch. Six thirteen, as we've said. Um, this one's got some good changes in it. Obviously, some strong champions are gonna be getting some nerfs. Uh, there's a handful of general changes. We're seeing some changes to supports, which we'll cover first. And there's some support item tweaks and some other things that are interesting down below. So stick around. If you could leave us a like as well, that would be free and awesome. We would appreciate you doing that. We we soup we soup appresh. I love appreciating. Yeah. So that's the plan. So let's crank. Blitz Blitz cranku is mm. first up on the docket. All right, so first thing's happening to Blitzcrank is Rocket Grab now pulls enemies 75 units in front of Blitzcrank instead of on top of him. What? Yeah, so you won't be on top of Blitzcrank, I know, right? So you can't mustache ride him when it's definitely not him. And then Power Fist, now the duration is 5 seconds instead of 10. Power Fist uh, and Power Basic Attack can no longer be canceled. And then Static Field now has a cooldown instead of it just being... 30 seconds, it's now 60, 40, 20. No longer hits monsters while Blitzcrank is out of combat. The passive. That's good. It is good. It is good. Not allow people to play Blitzcrank so they don't screw up my CS numbers. You know, you gotta get the CS numbers up to get your S plus for your freaking emblem things. Got them. It's true. Sort, so of, sort of true. So, that's what's <clears> up. So I think his changes will be good, just in general. Um, I like the change to Rocket Grab, it just makes sense. Um, and then Static Field, I think also makes sense to not just give it a 30 second cooldown, it's really really low early on, but giving it all the way down to 20 is kind of cool. He can use that multiple times in a fight if it's a sustained long fight, which is kind of neat, um, since it's just a big AOE damage silence field. I like that, so. Yep, 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 yep. He's one of those supports that's like, if you're good with him, you can destroy the game, but if you're bad with him, you're awful with him, and you should never pay, play him ever again. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. So, um, those are the changes to the crank. Um, next up, though, is Lulu, who, who they have classified as a support, but I frankly almost never see her as Has a Has she ever been played as support? Like, occasionally in competitive, but most of the time she's usually she's in, like, been, like top, mid or top mid. Yeah. For, like, the last three seasons now? Yeah, for the most part. She, oh. she was fluxing a little bit, or flexing. But oh, I love fluxers. I love fluxers. I gotta flux it hard. Um, base mana is being increased. Uh, base movement speed is also being increased, which is kind of cool. Um, Glitter Lance, the damage now falls to 70% against targets hit beyond the first. So you have less damage on that. Um, and the slow duration is now just two seconds at all ranks. Doesn't scale up. So just two seconds at all ranks, so that's good. Whimsy now grants... 15 to 35 percent attack speed for the duration which is also nice so um helps her with more supporty things rather than damagey things which is helpful but they didn't her. touch any of her damage except for the glitter lance change yeah, the so like, damage fall off yeah i think this is just a buff overall like yeah, they're well, not taking any power out of the mid lane yeah no i agree it yeah so. it's a buff overall but in fights, in theory, it's a little less damage, but she does get well, more support sure. aspects out of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she'll still be good. Yeah, she'll still be fine. I hate her. I know you do. I like her. I hate I her. I don't play her, but Smart. I like her. Um, next up is Tom Kench. And Kench is getting some changes. First off, on his passive, basic attacks and abilities deal 1 to 1.5%. This is at levels 1, 11, and 16 of Tom Kench's maximum health as bonus magic damage. Stacks three times versus champions. Okay, so that is just his old passive on his ultimate being moved, really, to over passive. to his passive passive instead of his ultimate's passive. Um, so that's the first thing you need to remember or see. And then his tongue lash 
damage on that is being increased at later ranks, so a little bit more. It's 5 added to each time, so compiling. It's up to 280 instead of 260 at rank 5. Thick Skin, though, is seeing a nerf where damage on gray health, instead of its 100% of damage taken, it's going to only it's gonna scale up, so it's going to be 70 to 90% of damage taken. And then gray health to healing conversion rate, instead of it being 20% to 44, it's going to be 25 to 44, 5. So it's a little bit more healing, but you get less gray health conversion uh, as your shield. This is the thing I've been talking about for the longest time, to nerf his tankiness down a little bit. They needed to address the thick skin shielding and healing, so they're nerfing the shield on it, which I think is good. Shield duration is only 3 seconds instead of 6 now, which is less. Cooldown on it is going to be 6 seconds at all ranks, though, so it is up more often to use it, but it's less overall. Um, shield no longer decays over the duration. It just disappears. Huh. So... There's a little bit of positive ne negative in there. It's positive that it's up more often, but it lasts less time. Its conversion rate is worse. Healing's about the same, honestly. So be careful with that, but it won't make him as tanky. Um, just a little bit less tanky, but he still will be tanky because he's a tanky champion. And then on his Abyssal Voyage, they so like we said, we move the passive off of it onto his just actual passive. Channel duration time is 6 seconds instead of 15. Cast delay is only a quarter of a second instead of 1. Enemy warning time is only 1 second instead of 1.5. And, and the range on it is being increased by 500 at all ranks. So um, just kind of makes his ultimate overall better, quicker, more responsive. I wonder if this is going to bring back the solo lane... Tom Cotch, the top laner brawler. I don't think it will because as I much don't know as about that. well, as long as well, I mean, like his passive is now just on his passive. But the big thing that I think makes this not work so well in top lane is the thick skin changes. Yes, he can use it more often, but he's getting less back from it, and he's absorbing less damage. And I think that is what made him tough in the top lane, and and kind of those changes. I think he can still be relevant there, but I don't think it's going to make him better. I think it will make it actually a little bit harder. Who knows? It's true. We'll have to wait and see, but um, I like that they're kind of trying to focus him more into the support role because I, I think he needs to be focused to it a little bit more. Because previously when they're like, he's a support champion in his summoner spotlight, and then like he was only played top because he was just ridiculous up there. So Yeah, so. agreed. Um, next up is Thresh. Um, on his passive damnation, Epic Monsters now drop two souls, so he gets a little bit more out of that. And then on his W, Dark Passage, um, it, he no longer has an AP ratio on it. It's removed, but it now grants one shield per soul collected. Um, so you have that now. So it'll be better, but at the same time, it's not going to really change Thresh's kit at all. At no, all. no, not at all. But it's nice. It, I like that it's different. It's neat. It makes sense, too, that he gets a soul shield amount on his... On an ability where he keeps his souls in his lantern, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense. It's nifty. Um, so that's Thresh. Really, I don't think anything's things change. It's just nice quality of life changes. Um, it might actually make that a little bit better in the long run, but overall, should should leave Thresh in a fine spot where he's always been. He's always been in a fine spot. So yeah, good changes for Thresh. I concur. Um, Zyra is the final support, getting some changes. Um, Garden of Thorns. The seed spawn time is being um, increased, so you don't get those to spawn quite as often, but it's not terrible. It's just a little bit longer. And then Deadly Spines has a bug fix, where it would automatically target enemy champions of Zyra that hadn't damaged them, which it didn't need to do. And then Rampant Growth, ammo recharge time, is being increased at early ranks, but actually decreased at later ranks. So it's one second off once it's at rank 5, um, but it's a little bit longer early on, uh, three second increase at rank 1. So overall, um, plant seedlings won't be everywhere quite as often, but honestly, this might actually help Zyra in one way. I know that this is, I mean, it, it, it's good for people against her, but in some ways this will actually help her conserve her mana if she doesn't see seeds constantly like she needs to constantly cast. So it actually will help with your mana conservation, but yes, she won't have seedlings out there to do tons of damage. So. Uh... I hate Zyra, just because I play all short range AD carries, and her plants are way too much. They could have doubled the spawn time at the beginning, uh, and it still would be too much. Like there's, yeah, seven, yeah. eight, nine, it's like pain. of it those could... things. 
Well, what they need to do is, I would be fine with the normal spawn time, but like, just make it go so there's like a maximum of four in a lane at the time, like at a time. Yeah. So, like, just cap it in like a range around Zyra. She can only have four, and then, like, if she puts one down with rampant growth and the other one goes away, because there's there's just too many. Like, because they basically what what. What those seeds do is they create little pockets of like zoning potential because all she has to do is throw out a W in the way that you're walking and you can't walk onto him because it's basically, you know, the 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 root is going to get there before you do. Yeah. And so it's just it's not a very good champion design right now. Um but I like I think she's fun to play. I think she's good. I just think that she needs to be toned down quite a bit. I will say the only thing that does help her stay toned down is she is really she is still really squishy obviously. So she yeah, but she has she has a she has CC that can hit as many people as it hits. Like it's not yeah. it's not a Leona CC or a Thresh CC or any other support that has that kind of CC built into it. Like, um, well, I mean, Thresh can kind of hit multiple people with his CC. Well, his E, but E is very like minute. No, I guess. I'm just saying though he can, and his ult, his alt can hit his him his too. main form of CC like CC though is his is his hook well, that's one person let's crank that, has his hook that's one person no that's true but morgana has bind that's one person remember that um, who else is a support bard um, has the two person but he has to hit it just right and if you're that bad then you're that bad but i don't know but she's, I just, she's originally meant to be a mage who got pushed into oh, the role no, because get, of the I, meta yeah i get why she's still like they reworked her and they didn't do a very good job um she, like if you go into like a, a bot lane against Zyra Caitlyn, you're basically zoned out of the lane. Like if you're like have a short range support or like a short range AD carry, you're basically just fucked. Yeah. Uh, um and I just don't think that lanes that are that oppressive should be allowed. Um in the game. Your support uh, should be able to help you though, I think, in that lane, hopefully. The only the only thing that you can do against that lane is pick a Soraka and basically just CS as best you can under turret and lose turret in 10 minutes. Like, that's that's literally the only thing that you can do. Because you're, you're going to get out damaged at all times because they have Zyra. Yeah. And you can't walk forward in lane because there's 700 traps and, or 5 traps and 700 plants. So I don't know. I just think she's a little dumb. And I think that just creating a set number of plants that can be down at any time within the range. They would... did at least limit it, like, uh, with. I saw eight. No, I know, but I mean, they at least limited it so she can't just stand in bushes and get them to also spawn too. So at least they did do that. But yeah. Someone said that we didn't touch the last changes in Thresh. We didn't the, have changes. The, we did. The, the, the QW throw behind is very, very easy to pull off. And this is just for people who like... Oh, yeah, that's changed. ...try to overthrow it, and then it walks backwards, and it actually yeah. uh, had some funky things. So it's not even really a change. They just made it, like, simpler and clean. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, that's it. That's cool. all I got. Is that right? Cool. Uh, next is Zillion. Fixed a bug where Chrono Shift wasn't procking on heal effects. So it's fixed. Hooray. Uh, cool. Yep. Um, Nar is up next, passive. Um, on his passive, um, mini Nar bonus range is increased to 500 at all. Um, no, it scales up. Yeah, it scales up to 500. So it's increased to 500, though. So 400 to 500 instead of 400 and 485. So it's increasing. Uh, boomerang throw, return boomerang distance is at 3,000 now instead of 2500 so you can be you can run away more and it'll keep coming you won't outrun it and then on hyper the damage is increased by five at all ranks hooray and that's that's nar so i i don't think that nar's kind of coming back into the meta a tiny bit this should probably just help him a tiny bit actually come back like uh, not not like officially officially but a little bit more well he's just so good at countering meow kai and now that like there's doesn't he do okay against like Jax Aurelia, who have also been, come back a little bit? Uh, he does okay for like, against... li like for the first like three levels, and then he gets dumpstered. But um, that's what the buffs are for. <laughs> I think that well, like I don't know, fifteen range is not going to help. Like boomerang. No, I, is not... no, I hear you. I hear you. These uh, are like quality of life changes. Yeah, yeah, they're not that. They're not. They're not 
you know, important changes, I, I guess. I just like I that know. it says Q damage is up, and I'm like, five. It's up five. <laughs> um, yeah. I sneeze more damage than that. But, like, this is going to be kind of a little mini rant, and okay. it's just because... Aurelia is up, and we're in between Nara and Aurelia. Mm -hmm. This is the most unbalanced League of Legends has been in a long time. Um, and what I mean by that is you have the top tier champions like Aurelia, and like you just have this like top echelon, like god champions, and then everybody else, like those are must bans, and there's like, I, there's I, like five of can them. I disagree and with you a every, little bit. Everything else is balanced, if that makes sense. Like, I, Everything else yeah. is balanced, but the top five champions are so fucked up that like you're basically they should just when 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 champions get to the point where they're being banned like fifty or like not fifty like yeah. eighty ninety percent and ranked you should just have them on like disabled and ranked until they change the path. Well, Does okay, that's because I, no, I, I hear you say can I, can I counter uh, just a little bit of it because I kind of agree but I kind of don't. I think. Previously, a couple patches ago, League was really unbalanced, like like what you were saying. And I thought it was a couple patches ago. I think currently it's it's been getting closer to correct. But yes, there had been that upper echelon. But I thought it was previously, because previously they were, we were banning the same four characters over and over and over and over and over. It was the Echo and the, it was like, it was yeah, a handful of takes. Yeah, it was a couple patches ago. Kindred, yeah. I okay. think it's getting better now. Yeah, it was Kindred. It was um, but, Echo. But there's was, there was ways. Though all those champions that you like that you list are like relatively squished, like relatively squishy champions. Irelia Echo? builds Trinity Force now. Jax builds Trinity Force now, and like just shits on the game. No, I hear you. I hear. You. So okay, so let me go back to well, what I was saying though. Just so fucked up. We what don't was, even want to talk about Rise. What, what was the second part you said, though? I think that about... So, the reason that there's bans is for those bad... Like those oh, oh, that's what I... Yeah, I remember what I was going to say. I remember what I was going to say. Why don't you just perma-ban them across the ranks? So, I think, I think this is stupid... I think this is some stupidity stuff, though, that the community does. Because there's still been a lot of champions getting banned that don't need banned because of stupidity. If people want to ban it, that's fine. But, like, Malzahar is still getting constantly banned, and he's not worth it at all for the ban. I've seen Malzahar get banned in a long time. Oh, God, I still see it all the time. Really? And Zed's still getting banned a lot, and granted, he's better because he can't cleanse him, but Zed still isn't, like, a massive problem. But that's, to me, that's that's something that you should, like, I ban Zed every game that I get a ban because I play AD carry, and I don't, like, I hate playing against Zed, Talon. That's the, fine. That's a, that's a choice for the that's role, a though. Choice. That's, a, that's a personal choice. That's what a ban should be. You shouldn't have to waste five out of six bans in a game because these champions are just so much better than every other champion that they have to be banned in 90% of games. Yeah. Does that make, like, to me... I, know, that, I hear what you're that, saying, but... That but then just it, makes more sense instead of... But then of, it comes down to if, if everybody is, like, personal choice, I play ADC or we always have an ADC on our team because that's how it works. And every ADC player says, I want to ban Zed, and everybody bans Zed, and, and he has got a 90% ban rate. Does that mean they need to nerf the shit out of Zed? Or basically that means remove him from the game. No, no, I'm not saying you have to nerf these champions. I'm just saying that if, if a champion in a game it goes above 90% ban rate, let's say. Okay. All right? Then you then you perma ban that champion across all all ranks, and then if another champion like there's let's say there's a set number like five of these champions or four of these champions because most of the time there's only like four or five six champions that are like blatantly overpowered at a time, and then when like one of the other champions gets up into that, mm -hmm. you take the champion that like let Riot use their discretion. You take the champion that they think needs to be dropped down, and you drop it down kind of like a you know, European soccer league thing. Yeah. Where where this champion comes down because this champion goes up because they're banned ninety percent of the time. So but like there's I think that would be like that would promote so much more like spontan like spontaneity. Spontaneity, is that a word? Yeah. Like I hear what you're saying, but one other, but one of the, so I do agree that there was an upper echelon, yes, but one of the reasons that makes me think that this has actually been one of the better seasons of diversity play is, like, I've seen a lot of other champions play, like, all over the board this season compared to other seasons, where it's, it is the same stuff over and over. I will agree, though, there have been, the, the patches have been very focused on, for the last three or four or five, six, the same six champions are sort of getting banned over and over, but they have changed a little bit. Then at why least. even have bans? Is what I'm saying. They almost need to add another ban. They need to 
they sh like three bands was enough when there was 50 champions in the league. We should have like we should six, have like... six bands a team or something like that. No, I think that's a little crazy. Or like let everybody on the team have a band. I I mean, you could ban 10 champs. I mean, there's still there would still be 110 to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> the I mean, only pro but here's why you can't do that many bands. The, and and it's it's not a stupid reason, but this is why. Because if everybody gets on like a trolley mood, or let's say you're banning out the world's best ADC, and everybody bans out, you know, let's say the enemy team bans five ADCs, and you happen to ban out one or two early against the other one, there's like no ADCs left in the game to pick. You you will run out of a roll, or you'll have two. You'll be like, there's Urgot up, and there's Varus, or something like, you know, like there'd be two things up. That's why you can't have a good jillion, because the roll... The role diversity, but like, like five, it's there, but it's not enough. Five isn't that bad. Like, how many AD carries are there? Like, 17. You cut out more than half. Let me check. I know that it sounds crazy, but that's... Oh, that's the wrong... wrong We're going to find out more. Champions. Do you, want, do you want to know the ones that are considered to be ADCs? There Wait, are, are there any AD carries that aren't... Oh, no, I don't want... Like, there don't are, me, Teemo, and fucking... I don't know who else. Okay, is. yeah, okay. So then just ADCs, and this counts Urgot, but all just the normal ADCs, there's 18 of them. Yeah. So if you ban, if everybody bans AD carries, you still have eight, eight, and no one's not. They're That's never not that many, eight. dude. Well, my point is, is AD carry is the, like, thinnest role in terms of champions. Uh, no, actually, probably support. But, but AD carry is the second thinnest role when it comes to champions, right? Yeah. There's 18 of them. And, or... Okay, did you take out Teemo? Yeah, he wasn't counted. Champion. That's still eight champions, and that's and you're talking about like only if two teams both decide to troll at the same time. Like, yeah. what? How many games out of a hundred do you think everybody in the game would ban eighty carries? I'm just saying, like, you you, you start to pinch rolls pretty hard. I you know you just gotta be careful with that. Um, but so, it would create cause, more because I think. Because I think the other problem, too, is, like, think about the support role. Like, I, now, unfortunately, when I ask how many supports there are in the game, it's giving me a bunch of other weird shit that I don't count as supports. Like what? Or, I mean, like, they are mildly supports, but they're not, like, it's giving me Mal Malphite and Vigar and Lux, you know, and Talia. Just, just you know, I'm, I don't really count them as supports, right? I mean, yeah, I've seen two people play it poorly, but that doesn't mean it's a support pick. Well, like, there's su like another... support I would agree with, because support has, there's 12 listed, then you have Morgana... You have Alistair, you have uh, like a few other champions that aren't actually on there that are supports. So, like even in that situation, you still have six supports to choose from. Six. I don't think that's that many, though. And, well, you got like that's never gonna happen. No, I agree, it's not. But I don't think that's enough diversity to pick from. But that's never gonna happen. I just. I don't know. I've seen weird games. Well, like, I mean, just for example, like, look at the, uh, like, I mean, we only have six now, but, like, when people get on a roll and they're banning out rolls, like, right now, you ban out pretty much every mid-mage, or, you know, that happened. You know? What? And, the, the, like, the highest banned people that I've seen are, like, still Zed, obviously. Aurelia's perma-ban. Like, I, it's just... Well, I haven't actually seen her get perma-banned yet. I have, I haven't played a game with an Aurelia in it since this patch went live. Really? Yeah. Oh, I've played a few. I haven't, and I feel bad because Where's bans? like ban ban rate. Zed's well, the highest. I'm also talking about. It, what, see, there's only games I haven't played any ranked. No, that's what I'm saying though. Just but here, like right now, the highest ban. Yeah, it's Zed. It's 81. percent But 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 behind that is Swain at 60, Vlad at 50, Fizz at 45. I mean, they're not 90. Really, there's only 33. So a third of the games, Echo still gets banned. How how, how how recent is that? It is this patch. Well, I mean, like, just this patch? It's this patch. Just this patch. Correct. I don't think that's right. That can't be right. It is right. <laughs> that can't be right. It's right. Oh Mal still gets a quarter of the bands. Yasuo still gets... Oh, we're going across the... Across? Oh, my God. Of course. What, do you, mean gonna a, what do you mean across? Noobs down the bottom. No, no, it's not across. It's 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 not across. It's platinum up. Uh, where am I? Band champions, highest band champions. Where are you now, sir? Vlad got seventy-five percent. Okay, so yeah, let's say like, I... if you're banned, I, I have Vlad, Aurelia, Kindred, Swain, Zed, Nidalee, Rise as the top band champions. What? what... Never mind. 
But you know what I'm saying, but they're not 90% banned champions. Yeah, they get banned a lot, but... I'm just saying, there needs to be a threshold where they have champions auto, auto banned. Or just give me more bans. You know who does get banned, and people should be playing it? Ziggs, that's all I'm saying. Should we move on? Yes. Where are we at? We've been on NAR for a while. No, fuck NAR. NAR's dumb. No, I know, but we've been on him. So I really was next. Her uh, ultimate's getting nerfed. Um, this is not the change that you are looking for. This is not the change you are looking for. Um, this this this, uh, this helps bring her down, but like, uh, yeah, still not very good change. So it, I mean, it nerfs her a little bit, which is good. I I suppose, but I think she should be yeah touched a little bit. Uh, next is Javan the fourth. J four. J four. Um, on his base shield, on his Golden Aegis, um, you get less shielding at later ranks, but you get bonus shields per enemies nearby, which means it's more rewarding if you do jump into a massive fight, Cataclysm style. And um, radius on it's being increased as well by a hundred. I. I like that this is risk reward for this change, actually. Sure. That's all I got. That's all he's got. That's all I got because you don't like Jarvan's damage, do you? Well, no, I don't have a. Pro I actually haven't seen Jarvan enough in game. Like I, I yeah. think that they could have left yeah. this like it is, and it would have been fine. Like no one cares about Jarvan being tanky. It's like his no, I... it's what yeah. is. You know, bananas. No. no, I hear you. I like it. I used to love playing full AD, Jervin. Shit's super fun. Um, Kindred's up next. Base armor's being decreased by 7. I'm going to sneeze real fast, but we'll see if it actually happens. Armor growth stat increased. Timo, bless you. By 0.25 per level. Oh, I hate this feeling. Eyes watering from it. I've got a feeling. And I'm not going to... Uh, nope, it's gone away. <laughs> Um, and then Wolf's Frenzy, Frenzy no longer grants a heal. Wolf now maims jungle monsters, reducing their attack speed and movement speed by 50% for two seconds. So, basically, Kindred got nerfed again, which... Better nerf Kindred. Yeah. Kindred and I really... Was, Kindred was strong, you know? Like, you know? Was. I have seen less Kindred, so I really don't care anymore. I feel like they're just trying to get her out of competitive play because we've seen her so much. But Yeah, I agree. I just... I think it's funny that they're like... I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. They were like, oh my gosh, we want role diversity. We want different roles in different places, blah, 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 blah. And now all of those changes are like... All right. Like, Graves was too strong. They nerfed him into the ground. He's yep. still pretty good, but Kindred was too strong. Nerfed her into the ground. You know, Mordekaiser yeah. was freaking bonanzas, nerfed him into the ground. Yeah, what? I'm so sad. What happened? I can't play him in any role, though, now, because they nerfed him into the ground. Oh, yeah. It sucks. Angry. I don't know. I, I, I agree with this change because I just am tired of seeing Kindred, but at the same time, like, I think she's fine as is. Yeah, agreed. Um, Swain Train is next. Pain in the Swain Train. Ravenous Flock's cooldown is increased to 20 seconds instead of 10, which is good. Because. Initial lockout on recast? Uh. Yeah. Uh. And the initial lockout on recast, instead of it being 0.5 seconds, it's 2. So, uh. um, I think this is a good nerf to him. Um, Swain, honestly, damage wise, still pretty good, but. He I, is. It's a sustained damage. It's not super bursty like it was originally, and they did nerf him a little bit. He's yeah. still definitely strong. No arguments there, but um, he has come down a little bit in that power. So, just be aware. I think he's still pretty. He's no. He's still really good. He's just not he's as ridiculous good. as he was. Yeah, he was he's not one of those top tier champions. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but he's still definitely playable. Oh yeah! Oh god! Yeah, he's still really. I mean, he's still really good. He just he's been getting toned back down from that super up god mode to down to here. So, um, Cinder's next. She has a lot of bugs, so they fixed a lot of bugs. Fantastic how that works.
Fix the bug where Force of Will would only grab two spheres at max rank based on where she clicked. Fix the bug where getting card controlled while grabbing an object could put Force of Will on cooldown. And then on Unleashed Power, it now continues to check for spheres during entire cast duration rather than only on cast, which is good. And then fix the bug where spheres produced by Unleashed Power would become impossible to use if her target died during the cast. Well, that's kind of crappy too. That's good that they fix Syndra. Honestly, she's the like most well besides Azir, she's like the most bugged mage like ever with her, all of her like interactions with her orbs. It's ridiculous. I yeah, uh, actually kind of like this change because once you queue your alt and it starts, like you can do whatever you can move around yeah. or whatever. So like you could do some like pretty cheeky shit where you have like a few balls over to the like backside and then you like start your ulti and then like flash backwards and snag those balls and throw them but uh, that'd be a waste of a flash yeah yep. but you get my point i do here so mm -hmm. i think it's a good change i, I do like here. it yeah it's cute next up is trundle his Thank base you, jesus his base health regens being reduced from 9.4 to 6 which is good because honestly, his passive is kind of his health regen. So yeah, he just had too much sustain in lane. Yeah, which for support and top lane, he doesn't need any more than what his passive already grants him fairly well. So it's fine. This is a this is a fine change. Yeah, I like it. Next is Twitch. Um, fixed a bug on his ambush. Stealth delay would instantly complete if Twitch killed an enemy champion, and that's an issue. So they fixed it. Hooray for Twitch. He's also been seeing more play. Yeah, I want to know why. Because squishy teams and Twitch is decent right now. Uh. He could do damage to a whole team. Uh, let's see. What, what, am, I, uh, what am I trying to think? Uh, Build oh, yeah. path? Oh, no, wait. I know what I was trying to say. AD carries suck balls right now. And. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and so basically, <laughs> the, the AD carries who are really good are either they're for one purpose and one person purpose only to push towers or b for long range engage or c which is you fucking appear out of nowhere you drop your load and kill like three people and then you die instantly because you're an 80 carry yeah um i just i actually think that they did a whole bunch of like 80 carry, 80 carry changes what was it like before the season or whatever and then mm -hmm. like slowly they've been bringing it back down and AD carry, yeah 80 carry is the the worst yeah. role right now um they didn't make the 80 carries themselves more fun and yes they were strong but yeah they've been just nerfing him down yeah so, like and, you'll be able to carry and then like they just nerf it yeah, over it's, and over it's, it's the worst it's the worst position in the game right now it's easier to carry from support it's easier to carry from mid lane jungle and top lane than it is to carry as an 80 carry yeah I, yeah i kind of believe that yeah. so but that happens. It does. We'll see what they do in the coming patches. They don't. Um, AD carries are too hard to balance. They either do too much damage throughout the game, or they like are just so completely useless in the early game that. Yeah, it's like, it's the balance between where their first power spike comes in and their worthlessness before it. You know. Yeah. So. I just there's there's no good place for AD carries. Yeah. Next up is Vladimir. Um, so his passive is getting tweaked. The uh, ability power ratio um, per bonus health, instead of being 25 bonus health to get one, it's now 40 bonus health, so it's less. And then AP to bonus health ratio, instead of one health, it's for one ability power, it's 1.4 health per one ability power. So changes there coming in. There's a big old fat Vladimir nerf. Yep, and then on transfusion, the damage on that is being nerfed. It's base damage. Um, and then the ability power ratio is being increased. So my build that I posted about more of a AP Vlad uh, will be a little bit more relevant than the tanky Vlad builds. All the tanky Vlad's still good, obviously, because you're a tank. But the damage on tanky Vlad will be pretty decreased on your Q and on your passives. So there, it's like these two changes are conflicting because the passive like it enforces you to go AP. What the passive? Yeah, the passive. The passive makes you want to go tank, and then transfusion makes you want to go AP. Yeah, no, yes, I agree, but that's why they did that, because previously it was just more rewarding to just go tank. Only yeah. tank. Yeah, well, my point is, is like... They want you to choose wisely. Yeah, you're either gonna you're either gonna live forever and do no damage, or you're gonna do no damage and... or do all the damage and die right away. Well, that's what blood pool's for. 
you're gonna die too fast to blood pool and zanyas yeah do it right you're not doing yeah. it right kyle no nope, i can't push the buttons it's just too hard i knew it it's too many you too just, many. you're just you're just a vain person you just no tumble you just tumble whoa whoa whoa! i tumble. know how to hit e2 and tumble. r and tumble. flash oh and heal oh i just don't have a w okay uh, well, that's bad news for you because on Volley Bear, <laughs> his W is being changed. Um, Frenzy, the damage on that is being decreased at earlier ranks, and the attack speed per stack is being decreased at earlier stack ranks. I hate to bring him up. Let's do it. What are we bringing up? He's a bear. I know. It's his name. Two and a half weeks ago, mm. Mm. I saw a retweet from Trick, and he said, Volley Bear's... W is super broken right now, and it'll get nerfed. It's been broken for a long time, honestly. And here it is. Yeah, but it's been broken for a long time. Is is this is this news? I don't yes, think it's news. news. Oh, no one know. fucking cares about Volley Bear. He sucks ass. Dude, he's got like one of the highest win rates in the game. Yeah, right you now. wanna know why? Because he's fucking broken. And he sucks ass. Because he's played in silver a lot. Yeah. Um, you wanna know why? Because he's just got a Mundo ultimate for a passive. No, I was gonna say. Yes, but <laughs> he I was does. also going to say because that's what the community of that individual falls into. Silver. Yeah. No, it's true. Oh, <laughs> let me take my victory sip. All right. <laughs> um. Next up is Ziggs. Bouncing bomb now more consistently explodes when bouncing near large units such as Baron, Dragon, and sixth stacked Choke Gath. Good for more bug fixes. Hooray, Ziggs. Is that a bug fix? I feel like that's just like a... It's consistency. Quality. So it's, yeah. it's a quality of life bug fix. It's combo deal. Mm -hmm. um, terrain <laughs> abilities. New path. Straight towards the dynamically created terrain. Instead of trying to go the long way around it, this mimics Talia's Weaver's Wall functionality and now impacts... Anivia, her crystallized Trundle Pillar, ZZ Portal, Jarvan's Cataclysm, and Azir's Emperor's Divide. So you won't try to run really awkwardly around things when they block a path. You'll run up to them instead of running around them. Because like if you wanted oh, to help God. a friend on I the other side, you'd always start running away. I always wanted to walk right in to the Trundle Pillar so I could get slowed before I get... Yeah. Spanked. Spank, spank daddy on it. Can we skip Howling Abyss because no one cares? Yep. Good. Items. The Ancient Coin line. The Ancient Coin, base-wise, now has a 5% cooldown reduction. Nomad's Medallion has a different build path. The price is the same. You get 5 more cooldown reduction. You lose 25% health regen, but you gain 25% mana regen. Who the builds this coin? now? Not a lot of people. Talisman. Does Soraka or does Soraka even do the blue thing? I don't know, actually. I haven't played Spell a lot of Soraka recently. Um, Talisman is 300 more gold. It now grants 45 armor. It gives you 50% more health regen. A tiny bit less mana regen, 25% off. And now builds up that 25% 20 movement speed over 2 seconds while near turrets, fallen turrets, and void gates because it has a raptor's cloak in it. So you get quick around turrets, which I do really like that passive. It's really strong for pushing lanes and running away. Because let's face it, in between the short lanes, like mid, you can like run down mid in a million miles an hour because like those turrets are so close together that passive's always active. It's really cool. So I do like these changes, honestly. Hopefully this puts some power back into the coin line of things. Sound good? Sure. You content? Uh, I don't really see the relevance of this change, <clears throat> but... Okay, well, let's see what the other ones have to offer. Yeah. Runic Shield Line. Oh, I love this one. Minion Execute, instead of it being 200 health, it's 195 plus 5 per health. 5 level health, blah, blah, blah. Um, Targon's Brace, 200 plus 10 then level per health. Face of the Mountain is now 320 plus the 20 level, you know, health. And then same thing with the Eye of the Equinox. So that will help with the Execute stuff. Hooray. That's all the changes to that. Spell Thief's Edge. The Tribute Passive is no longer put on cooldown when killing enemy pets such as Zyra Plants. That's a good fix. 
I don't care about the relic. I don't care about any of these changes. The the talisman change is pretty nice, but like, who the fuck builds talisman? Like, get you know, get a life nerd. Uh, but like, the relic shield is like, if you have problems executing with targets, like, you yeah. need to stop playing this video game and go play Barbie's Horse Adventures because hey, that's a good game. Because the game gets a lot harder than that. All right. It's true. So these all mean nothing. Maybe to me. those are just quality of life changes. You know. I think I easy. think that they should make it so if no fuck spell thieves, I don't want that item in the game anymore. Slow me. Yeah, it is annoying. <sighs> um, forbidden idol, the total cost of it is increased to eight hundred fifty gold from five fifty. Um, ten percent bonus healing and shielding power though on it. Uh, ardent sensor, the cost of it is two hundred more overall. Ability power is up twenty to sixty now. Mana regen's down from 100 to 50 percent, um, but 15 percent bonus healing and shielding power. Mikhail's Crucible, the overall gold cost is increased by 100 gold. Crucial hearing is also added, so 15 percent bonus healing and shielding power. Um. Can we get some gold for killing Zyra plants? Yeah, you always get gold for killing Zyra plants. Yeah, but it's not enough. Oh, they want more gold? Well, at least you get gold. That's a way to counter Zyra. You make her plants worth 25 gold. You won't fucking spawn them anymore. No, I'd still spawn them. I'd give no, them I, you would you? Yeah. Because if I kill eight of those things, it's a kill. No, 13, it's not. 13, it's 200. Or, it's 13 or 14. What? 13 or 14 minions is essentially a kill. 12. Depend, depending on how far you are into the game. Cause 12. 25. Gold. 25 gold per 12. Well, That'd but it's, they're, not, they're not all worth 25 gold. Early on, they're worth like 18. Anyways, uh, Mikhail. I like these changes well. because I like, uh, as I call it, the Michael's Crucible. Yeah, Michael's, what about it? I like that change because okay. I actually build that item quite a bit when I have to play support because AD carries suck balls in these games. Mm -hmm. And so you like to get them out of the sticky situations. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still not as good as, like, let's say, Locket of the Iron Solari or. Uh, that's about it. Okay. Those are the only. That's the only other item that I would build on a support. Nice. So. Um, Ruby Sightstone cost is decreased by two hundred gold. Active item cooldown reduction twenty percent instead of ten percent. So nifty for Ruby Sightstone. Maybe someone will buy it that now. No, they won't. They'll still do the other one. They'll still do the uh, I have Equinox or whatever. Eh, maybe we'll see. We see. Um, Hextech Protobelt. Protobelt's dash now disables spell casts and channels for the duration. Good. Yep. So what I was seeing is um, Vlad's holding down their E and then dashing forward and then letting go. Yeah. Or oh, is it only those? Things disable... like that, at least. What about like Kenan's ulti? Or like Does that work? I don't know. Things. Yeah. It no, works. I, I bet if it's... yeah, fuck so hard with that little squirrel monkey thing. Fucking turn on the ulti, flash protobelt, like she like jumped halfway across my 27 inch monitor. It's just like, uh, I guess I didn't want to play this game. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. But no, I, I like that item just because it's something that you have to play around. But I don't like that item because it, uh, it's ass. Cause, cause and yes. Because yes. I carry, and that's another reason why I carries carry suck balls. Oh wait, does that come out tonight? Oh my god, I know what I'm doing after the stream. Is it play Weecher 3? No, like o I am? Overwatch Ranked is coming out tonight. It's live. Right now? Right now. All right, sorry. No, I got wrap this shit the up. Oh, wrap this shit oh, up. Rolling, roll, roll, roll. Friday. Um, yeah. Wards. Attacking wards will not trigger in combat status for the purpose of Boots of Mobility, Cloud Drake, and Talia's like rock surfing. Good. I like that. Because I don't count that as combat. It's a ward. It doesn't fight you. Wards now grant 30 experience when killed, 15 for blue ones. And for every 150 seconds that a ward is alive, it becomes visibly swaggier for the team that placed it. I... Okay, so the first two changes are kind of counterproductive for me. If you get experience for killing a ward, you should be in combat, because the only way But to... you get experience oh, when just... a turret dies, even if you're not by it. Or don't you get global? Uh... Oh, they took that off. They took that off, sorry. Yeah, so it's just like... What you about... get experience from fighting, yeah. but you're not fighting. No, I agree. That's weird. Um, uh, I think it's... Like, that's just me nitpicking. I honestly think that it's both fine. Like, 
I, I, I'm okay with all these changes. Yeah. Except for the fact that they use the word swaggier. Yeah, that's my least favorite change of all these. I, I want to find whoever wrote these and... Charizard. ...them immediately. Scarzard. Is it Scarzard? Yeah, he writes them. I know him. I'm going to punch him in the face. Punch him in the face. Global experience pacing, catch-up experience. Um, catch-up experience now scales um, continuously with permanent, permanent, uh, with percent missing level rather than remaining at a set value from level to level. You now get more catch-up experience at a 2.5 level behind rather than 2.3 levels behind than 2 levels behind, etc. To accommodate the new continuous growth, catch-up experience kicks in earlier but scales less strongly. So I don't like the this whole thing. I think they should... They're basic. This is another way for them to make the game easier. Um, if you get booty blasted in lane, uh, you deserve to be behind. Yeah. And you shouldn't be able to catch up easily. Like, that's the whole point of getting well, that, is you got booty blasted, let's surrender at 20, and move on to the next game. Or, Tyler won that shit open mid, baby. Well, the problem is, I think this is okay now because... The changes in the preseason when they did change this originally, it created a problem where you could snowball levels too fast. Like, I, I, I agree. It's good when you can snowball your levels a bit because you did get you did the booty blasting, but it was a little too outrageous. Like, just a little bit too outrageous. Just, they needed to scale it back a little bit, and I think they've scaled it back a little bit here. So... That's just me. Also, this does help people who do happen to DC and so they can't catch up. I mean, I know that's unfortunate that we well, let people catch up. Well, then put a special up. stipulation in the game that they gain more experience if they DC or like some shit. If they're no, there's no like, way for the game to tell if that happens. I'm sure that they can fucking or yeah, you can. Not specifically. So and so has disconnected. Well, that's if, not if always if a so good way. If so and so quits, then they don't fucking get the bonus experience. But if so and so disconnects, well, here I have something else you probably won't like at all. Ready? Oh my god. Post-death kill experience. Oh my god. Champions now continue to gain experience from nearby champion kills for 10 seconds after death. Even, if, seconds? even if they didn't participate. What? I know, this makes no sense to me. All right, I, so I don't is, get this. This is this is what we like to call... Well, first off, I guess your team would have to get the kills. This is that you fell at ganking so bad that we feel bad. Here's some experience. This is the... This is the uh, I honestly think that... So... I'm trying to think ahead. I think that we've talked about this before about how how WoW killed WoW by making the game too dumbed down. This is a fucking another a perfect example. Like, you don't learn yeah like how to become a better League of Legends player by getting babied. And I agree. And they're getting babied right now. And the other the, the good people of old are leaving the game because they don't want to play this anymore because it's so fucking vanilla compared to what it used to be. Like you had to do stuff to win the games. Now you just like fucking can get just you know yeah well blasted. we'll see how long this lasts or if it's even that big of a thing but it's interesting the whole thing that if they didn't participate is just like fucking dumb yeah how do you gain experience a if you're dead i didn't you shouldn't be able to make experience at all like get like gain experience at all after you die like regardless of if you assist or not because you're fucking dead eh. two, no two it would put more. They need to like. They need to put more, like, emphasis on staying alive, because there's so many catch-up mechanisms or like, you're fucking dead now. You gain half a level experience, mechanisms like. Yeah. They're they're making it. They're putting no like less and less value on each individual, like each life. So <laughs> if you die ten times, no, I hear you. You should be you should be so far behind that. Like, the game's going to have to go 50 minutes for you to get relevant again. Like, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. Do you want to get mad again? Yeah. Okay. Early kill rewards. Champion kill rewards less experience at earlier levels. <laughs> Returning okay, so this, to is, this is the point I check out of this uh, whole thing because I have officially quit League of Legends. Uh, <laughs> cheerio. <laughs> and he's gone. Bre Brexit over here. Brexit it out. Oh, got him. Anyways. Um, yeah... Eh, yeah, I just, I'm going to pretend I didn't see that too. <laughs> um, summoner spells, ready for this one? Channel duration on teleport is increased by one second. Teleport drops its caster on the side of the target closest to the caster's nexus. For example, champions now always appear behind their towers. 
Um, teleport visuals are now always visible, even through the fog of war. If you have vision within 500 units of the target location, teleport now issues a sound list on my way ping at the target location. So that last change is once again making the game easier. Um, yeah. I like the change to this because teleport, I think, has been not overused, but I'm a top laner. I have to take it, you know, like. Well, it's it, just the it team has dynamic. Its... I have, yeah. I've taken teleport, I think, three times total in me life on top lane. Like, well, I play to kill people. No, I agree, but I mean, in, in the outside of that, though, you know what I'm saying? I know you and me like to play to win lane, although I do take teleport sometimes. I play to win lane, and by that I mean... I'm there to kill you repeatedly. Make surrender possible at 15 minutes. Yeah, the game used to have that. Was not good. Wait, what? The game used to have the surrender at 15 minutes. That was like season one, though. They need to make it 10. No, the game doesn't get that out of control. And Like, I hate when people die once and they're like, oh, best game. It's not in the uh, game. Uh, there, are, there are games. Like, they should put in, like, like brackets. Like, if you are too tur... Like, if you're, you know... Oh, if you're yeah. a turret and 10 kills behind at 10 minutes, you can surrender or some bullshit like Okay, that. yeah, I agree with that because sometimes, like, like, we have no turrets down on either side and, and my team's down two kills and somebody's yeah, down 10 CS about. and they're like, oh, we should like, surrender. And I'm like, how, I'm talk why? About, I'm going to say 30% of my games are over before before 10 minutes. Why should I have to play the remaining 10 your minutes or are, the remaining 15 minutes? Your games suck. Mine are not like that, thank God. Uh, my games are very, very snowball -y. Yeah. Well, they need to fix the uh, the experience thing. Oh, they are! No, you know what they need to do? The reason that people don't like League of Legends is because you have to play it for 40 minutes. Like, if they could speed up the game, if you're they getting fucking shit on, the game shouldn't last longer than 10 minutes. Uh, now you're talking about Vainglory, and nobody wants to play that. I don't know what that is. It's a 10-minute MOBA. Um, Dragon and Rift Herald. Dragon and Rift Herald now wait to level up until they have been out of combat for 30 seconds. Oh, that's kind of nice. Instead of while you're doing it, I've actually had shit like, stolen because they level up. In time, yeah, where I like I would smite and they'd level up right when it happens, and like I'd miss smite by like ten or some shit like that. Yeah, like yeah, I'm a bad smiter, but like it shouldn't fucking gain life as it's fighting. Hey, good news for you though. Yeah. Attack move. They fixed a bug where attack move command issued immediately after a move command to the same spot would fail to overwrite it as a move command. Did I ever tell you that I almost got myself banned? Why? Because you yelled? No, because one of my smurfs got fucked up on my attack move click with my left mouse button. Mm -hmm. And, like, they they clouded the, the settings so, like, I couldn't fix it. And, like, every time I would try to fix it, like, I'd remove all my, all my like, notepads that have all yeah. your key bindings and shit. And then I'd re-put it in there. And, um, like, I sent in a support ticket. And they're like, we don't. We don't like it when people augment the game out, like the game's settings outside of the game. Yeah. Just like, well, maybe if you guys put this fucking option in, I wouldn't have to do this. You wanna know why I don't have carpal tunnel and like everybody and their fucking mom has carpal tunnel already? Because I use two fucking buttons to do attack move clicking. I don't have to go like this. My hand doesn't look like this when I'm a clicking. Like. Yeah, Put I'm it here. in the fucking game, Riot. Do your job. Wouldn't that be simplifying the game? Didn't you just talk about how... No, that would be making people not get fucking crippling injuries for the rest of their life. Have you seen, like... No, I... Yeah, I... Yeah, I Wild see. Turtle now wears a thing on his, th on his thing. Sneaky wears... Like, all of the professionals have to wear these fucking things on their wrists because their, like, hands are so fucked up because of this A-click thing. Yeah, I hear you. I, I hear you, though. Ooh, patch notes. Ranked emblems. No, not that one. Sorry. Wait, what? Um, Overwatch patch notes. <laughs> oh! Um, patch notes! Patch notes! Oh. Um, okay, ranked emblems. Yeah, wins for emblems will be continued for this. You'll need at least 25 wins since the start of the last patch to earn one. Um, solo emblems for the vast majority of recent wins come from queuing alone. There's also one for dynamic. And there's one for team. Um, I won't get any of these because I don't put ranked. Fun fact. You know what they should do? Hmm. To fix the problem of ranked. Got it? Ready? Oh, God, yes. I want to hear it. You get Give to the end me. of the season. Give it to me. 
And you uh, get gold. Okay. You get an extra skin if you are Lone Wolf. Oh, that's kind of neat. Over the fucking squad or partners in crime. Nah, actually, that didn't do anything for me. I don't care. What? I mean, I mean cool, but I don't really care. No, because it would put, it would put like, I don't want to say importance, but like it would put importance on queuing solo, but people could still make the sacrifice if they want to play squad. Yeah, no, I hear you. That's fine. You know what they could do? You know what I'd actually really love, love to see? Just the back rank? solo queue? No, I don't care about that either. You know what I'd like to see? Because I'm liking it in some other games? Shorter seasons. But they can't. I, the, their, their seasons are based off of their professional league, and unless they want to have... I know, that's the problem. Year. No, I agree. That's the problem, though. I mean, I, they can't do it, but that's what I want. You know? I, that makes sense. Like, if you could do it, like, twice yeah. a year, just yeah. reset the, like, twice. Just reset the ladder... When, like the mid-season, the yeah, big the mid-season, mid-season is, they changes? Make it, why not? Like, I don't think it's that crazy. And no, don't even I, give rewards out for that one, like, or like big rewards, just have a reset. You know? Or how hard is it for them to fucking make one of those skins? Not like, they hard. all look the same. They do. They're not that hard. They can't be. Like, uh, I make one of those skins, and I'm not even a fucking programmer. Yeah. Um, ranked restrictions, tier restrictions. High tier pre made. Um, I'm gonna go out on a limb, and this doesn't hardly affect many people watching this because this is Challenger Master Diamond um, stuff. But here's reminder, guys: it, you can't queue with more than two or three people. Two is a trios if you're a pre made. Three Good. division skill ranges from each other. So, all right. The next part I do like though: uh, scheduled ranked fives. They, they they dissolved this at the beginning or disabled this at the beginning of the season. Um, but that was stupid. So what's the fucking point of this? There's no leaderboard for it, is there? Each region will have different times and days to keep an eye on your region schedule. Otherwise, the queues work exactly like the old rank fives did. So teams can have up to nine players. No more restrictions on which, which rank tiers can join. So you can just play with your friends. Teams must play five games to become officially ranked and to place into an appropriate tier and division. Players can now be part of... of five different teams at any time from servers with threes enabled on twitch stream the play window now matches the schedule of ranked fives Nobody plays um, three line. realistically i just like the fact that they brought this back because as i maintain and one of the reasons why i don't play solo queue if you want to go play real ranked in league in my opinion you play it with 5v5 with your friends as a full team one because the game is much different as 5v5 ranked than it is as solo queue in my opinion because I played a handful of 5v5 rank for a few seasons, and it was really, really fun and way more challenging than any solo queue game I've ever played. Uh, yeah, because there's people who like actually put put to, like put thought into it. And... Well, that no, I mean like there's game communication and there's like you know like. And they put thought into it. Yeah, like, it's like, like like how the game's supposed to be played. Comps and that you don't get fucking Teemo jungle because you're a bronze scrubbly. Like, uh, I just I'm gonna say that. I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. I'm like, I I know people who were like mid to low gold last season, and now they're mid to low plat because they're queuing with people on Smurfs. Like, you need to crack down the Smurf problem if you're no. going to let people be able to queue with other people. Yeah, I agree. Boom, boom, boom. I just like rank fives because I you, do can pl- you can play with all your friends, and like I said, it's the experience of rank fives is way different than anything else in the game i don't care if you're doing like blind pick or whatever with five people on normals like it's still much different much 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 different it's way harder and it's way more fun because it's actually challenging in some cases sometimes you do rickroll them because they're you know outranked but that does happen but well, when it but fun. when it gets competitive it is really good matches like really good matches um bug fixes are next cool Fuck these. Those are bug fixes. Upcoming skins. Deep Sea Nami. Um, is that a tiny little Nautilus? It looks, the, good. looks like a tiny little Nautilus. How cute. He's got, he got the flip flops on, or the flippers. But then flippy flappies. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, no, I like that. It looks neat. I haven't seen that skin, though, honestly, yet. And then the other one is... <gasps> Soul Stealer Vane. I'm going to rage about... Oh no, Kyle. You never rage. Okay, so Soul Sealer Vane looks really cool. I'm a Vane main, I own every one of her skins, and I want this one, but 
There's no fucking way I'm going to spend five hundred dollars in hextech crafting. Oh, is it a hextech skin? Yeah. Oh, rip. And I think it's like uh, the Annie one was ten of those fucking purple shard things, and this one's supposed to be. I, it might be fifteen or ten. I'm not hundred percent sure, but it's still another ten mm -hmm. at least. And so, if you can even get get it like that, so it's just like. My whole beef with this is, is I've played so many games since Hextech Crafting has come out, and I have two of those purple gems, and... I think I have two. Like, are you, like, they don't... This is just stupid. Yeah, I agree. But at the same it's time, dumb. like, if they, if they start coming out with, like, legit skins for Hextech Crafting, I'm going to be so fucking mad, because... Or, they would... need, or the rewards need to flow more bountiful, at least those ones. Yeah, agreed. Because, yes, the amount of time that you play, yeah, I mean, if it, if it reflects that you can unlock that skin, then, yeah, I agree. Like, 10 gemstones should, ha should happen every, like, few months, not every $500. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So, it does look neat, though. I will say that much. I kind of yeah, like I, that. I won't be spending $500 to get the skin. Nope. Sorry. Sorry, Riot. Rip Go Rito, Riot. Yourself. Get him. Got him. Good. Um, that's the patch, though. Those are the notes. A lot of changes outside the champion changes. Um, there is the Vlad stuff I like, and the Swain stuff I like, and uh, a couple other just tweaks to champions that are legit strong right now. Um, and then a couple small buffs, but I kind of like, you know, the tweaks of the patch. We'll see if this stops the high ban rates of a few of those champions. Um, but, I mean, time will tell, you know? So... Yeah, oh, I like most of this. Although, yeah, I agree. Some of the experience stuff and some of the other things are weird. So, you know, we'll see. We shall see. Um, I honestly don't even want to. I don't even want to talk about Rise. Oh, I'll say. I'll just say a couple things. You don't have to talk about them. Um, I'm glad that they are doing something with him. Um, he's been impossible for them to balance. I fear, though, he still will be impossible for them to balance. So my, my, my remarks are, please make him a champion that fits and can be balanced besides completely overpowered or not helpful at all because he's only those two things. He's never really ever been in between that. And his ultimate looks nifty, but maybe strong. We'll see. They need to... All they need to do, in my opinion, is they need to remove his mana to AP power... ability power ratio. Yeah, no, I agree. Just that. give him flat flat shit. Because then they could tweak his flat stuff a lot easier to yep. make him more consistent. Yep. No, I agree. Yep. I agree. That's, that's what they always fuck up. Because of his items, he just gets out of control way too quickly. But, yes, that's it. Still have Riot won't do that. Riot won't give something for free. They give skins out for behaving nicely for whole seasons and then give you rewards at the end. They give free stuff. Wait, what? He's an AoE teleport? Yeah, uh, AO AoE teleport uh, ultimate. Uh, it's nifty, but it uh, might be real strong. Uh, Constant bans. Coming in. Oh, uh, Kyle's dying, guys. Oh, no. Uh, I'm so excited. Or is he jerking it? Oh, okay. I'm so excited. Um, but that is the patch. Um, that's patch 613. It will come out tomorrow. Um, let us know what you guys think down below in the comments. Or right now, live, if you watched it live. So thank you. Um, or thank you if you watched the whole thing. We love you more if you got to the end because that makes you that much cooler. And if you could leave us a like, we would definitely appreciate that as well. But that's going to be us for now. And we will see all of you guys later. Right. Bye. Bye-bye now. Oh, my God.